Grace and peace. Welcome to Spreading Truth Ministry and thank you so much for watching. Today I want to do a commentary of the reality show called Preach on Lifetime. I wasn't going to watch the show, but since it was online, the episode, and I had a chance to see a couple of comments that were on social media regarding the first episode, I wanted to watch it for myself before I made a judgment. But I will say this, when I saw that promo circulating, I was not a fan of the show at all. Um, I felt that it was a whole bunch of stunts and shows. I felt like, you know, that they were trying to make ministry entertainment. And I felt like there was a lot of flesh on parade. Honestly, the way they edited that promo, it was not a good look for the show. I'm just being honest. However, I'm glad I had a chance to look at the first episode. The episode was a whole lot better than the promo. However, there were some things that still concerned me. So let's, let's go into it. First of all, the premise of the show is these women are prophetess and they have protégés. And so they're mentoring them so that they can become, I guess, the next pro, you know, the next prophet, next prophetess in line. Okay. After them. And so they are coming together. Their ministries are coming together so that they can help service the community by way of deliverance. Okay. So they're having a major deliverance service at dr belinda scott's church with her husband okay in terms of the, the cast let's go through the cast real quick dr belinda scott prophetess scott a uh, prophetess cruz prophetess williams and prophetess roark again they all have mentorees um that they're trying to groom they didn't talk much about dr i'm sorry prophetess cruz at all here they didn't talk about her kelly cruz they didn't talk about her at all i think in the beginning they talked about that she was once I believe a protege of Dr. Scott, and but she went away and started her own ministry. So, um, you know, but I'm assuming that they're going to maybe go into her story a little bit later. Okay, so their mentorees, which this is the interesting part about it. Um, there was a lot that went on the first episode that was of concern to me. Not a whole lot, but there were some things. First of all, uh, Dr. Scott's husband was doing a lot of uh, commentary of the things that were going on. I mean, he did like step in and out of the episode. Um, initially he kind of was like the bishop over the women, you know, he expressed his concern to them. Like they can't be walking over the pews and there shouldn't be any competition. And I felt that that was good. But then later on down the line, he was making some commentary during the deliverance service about, well, Dr. Ro, I'm sorry, prophetess Ro Hark, Ro Ark was walking on the pews, even though he said not to, but I think that's her thing, which is. You got to respect people's houses. You got to respect the house that you're in. And I felt maybe she got caught up, but she was planning on doing it anyway. And I guess for him, it was like more of a liability issue than anything else. Um, but he didn't like that. So he made comments about it. But some of the commentary he made, I could have, he could have kept that because it, to me it was more hurtful to his ministry than helpful. But anyway, going back to the protégés, like I said, each of the women had protégés for the exception of uh, prophetess Cruz, they didn't show any of her stuff as of yet. But let's go back to the protégés. Dr. Ro Ark's protégé was very sincere. The protégés all seem to be sincere. Um, her protégé was from the streets. She was a drug addict. She was she sold her body, um, different things like that. So she had a very hard life, and she gave her life to God, and God delivered her. And and you know she has a beautiful testimony. Um, and so she seemed like I said, she seemed sincere. But the only concern that I had about the protégés is the way that they were talking about their mentors, um, saying that they gave me hope and, you know, they saved my life. And, you know, this, that, you know, like, wait a minute, Jesus saved your life. He used them as vessels, praise the Lord. But we just have to be careful that we give God the glory. You know what I mean? That he, he doesn't want to share his glory with another. And if he chooses to share his glory, that's his choice. But we can't, we have to be careful what they say. Now, I know she didn't mean it that way. But the way it came across, like I said, you have to be careful with this reality TV because they'll take what you say and make a little sound bite off. And before you know it, you know, it, you know, it, it will it will embarrass you. OK, um, <clears throat> so anyway, another part, another thing that was kind of concerning to me about her mentor, again, very sincere woman, very dedicated, and faithful to being an armor bearer. She was really uh, girding her in the spirit, I think, which was great. But after the deliverance service, she went home and her husband had a dinner prepared for her. And, you know, he was just seeming to be very supportive. And she came in and she told him about the service. And she basically said that she's not going to eat. 
um, you know, that she's on a consecration and she's on a fast and she has to be ready and she has to, you know, make sure that she girds her, her mentor because, you know, that's her job. But here's the thing, like she's a married woman, you know? So my concern is that as married women in ministry, we're wives. So we have to satisfy the need of our husband. Okay. And since she was, she probably was in a consecration up until the point of the, the, the deliverance service and then turn around and she's still continuing on a consecration. I'm sure she hasn't been intimate with her husband. I can almost guarantee because by the way he looked at her was he was very disappointed. And so my concern is for her. So I'm hoping that her mentor, which is Prophetess Roark, would tell her after this episode, hopefully they were able to really, you know, have a conversation about her marriage. But she needs to consult with him in regards to her body. She is not to fast. And he's supposed to know what's going on with her body. If she's fasting or anything like that. And she needs to give him his time and his attention before she does that. So let's say, for example, if, her, if she told her that she needs to go on a consecration, she needs time enough to spend time with her husband, okay, before she does that. Because he has his needs and she's responsible to, to take care of his needs. Because if you're not careful, just like the Bible says, you will leave room for the devil, okay, to come in and to interrupt their marital situation. So we don't want that to happen. And I pray to God that that's not the case. And I pray that, you know, she learned that that before she does that, this is what she needs to do. Uh, Prophetess Williams, protege, uh, she has a lot of personal issues going on with her children, with her, even within herself. She's a single mother. She was raised in a church. She, she, um, she backslid, different things like that. But she was told when she was a child that she was called to ministry, that God was going to use her in a mighty way. Okay, so she's Prophetess Williams, protege. All right. So Prophetess, Prophetess Williams is trying to, you know, work with her and different things like that. She decided that she was going to pray for her at the deliverance service. She prayed for her. She gave her an uh, impartation um, of deliverance and, and, and an anointing. She took the anointing and she decided she wanted to go to the car dealership and just claim a car. And Prophetess Williams did rebuke her and tell her that that's, the pur that's not the purpose of the anointing. It's for financial gain. She did rebuke her and let her know that. And Prophetess Williams was like, mm -mm, maybe, you know, maybe she's not ready for this. And it's, it's probably true. She's probably not ready. But since she's invested so much time and effort into this lady's life, it to me will be more detrimental to her if she were to cut her off. So I think it's just best for her to encourage her to go on a consecration because she's clearly have to die out more to herself and deal with her herself before she can begin to really engage in ministry. And last but not least, Prophetess uh, Scott's uh, protege, again, the young lady, um, the young woman is um, her family's are, her family is Muslim. So she was raised a Muslim. She accepted Jesus Christ. Awesome testimony. Like I said, the only concern that I had was when she made the statement about um, the anointing that she received from, from um, Prophet Scott because of the now she's having issues with her family because her family's Muslim and she's now Christian. And, you know, and so she needs a lot of, you know, power and strength and encouragement to have to fight that. That's a, that's a battle and a half. You know what I mean? I understand completely what she's going through. But anyway, she got the anointing from her and she got prayed over and stuff. And she said that it was almost like she received her first red bottoms. Ooh, I know that she didn't really, she just made the statement. She was just talking because she seems to be very sincere. But we really got to be careful what we say. We can't quantify the spirit. Like we can't put a price on the spirit to say red bottoms and the anointing. Like, mm, I didn't like that. But I know that, that again, her intentions were not to... To do that, she was just talking. You know what I mean? But we have to be careful. So I don't know if this particular show, you know, is going to be more hurtful to the body than helpful. I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to watch. I don't know if I'm going to make another, you know, commentary on another episode or anything like that. But I just wanted to just give my, you know, my opinion on what I've seen so far. And what I've seen so far is that yes there are there there's definitely stunts and shows um i really feel like that the women are very confident in what it is that they're doing we have to be careful as women in ministry because our confidence can be interpreted as arrogance okay so we have to be careful nor should we act like men like we we have to be careful that's not, i'm not saying any of the women are but i'm saying that's the fine line that women have when they're in ministry they have to constantly balance it's not fair but that's just the reality of the situation. And so, I don't know. I'm going to continue to keep these women in prayer. I just want God's will to be done in their lives. 
and that all, in all parties involved. God bless you until next time is my prayer. Shalom.